I'm going to be working with the following materials for this blouse project. I already have a previous tutorial in which I covered how to make the pattern and that's going to be linked down below. I'm going to be needing a long black zip that matches the material, some black thread, fabric, scissors, my tape measure, pins to pin down my pattern and of course the fabric I'm going to be working with. The main material is this sort of silver and black brocade and I used about 2 meters for this project. I also got some black organza that is a little bit thin and I thought this would work really well for the sleeves and for the underskirt. I ended up using about a meter and a half for this project. So I just went ahead and I pinned down my patterns and I'm just cutting down the different parts that I need. I'm cutting the back right now, just cutting around my neck, around the center back and down the waistline. So I'm going to pin down the flounce piece as well, which ended up eating a lot of fabric because of the direction that the pattern sort of turned in but i pinned it in such a way that i was able to cut out one main piece so i went ahead and i also cut out my sleeve i cut two one for the left and one for the right hand side using my balloon sleeve pattern so you also need to remember to cut your notches which will help you remember the specific parts of garments such as you know where your dad starts and where it ends the back and front arm curve so you can know what side of the sleeve belongs to where and especially for the the fold line along your cascading flounce because that's going to help you know where exactly you need to fold the flounce piece when it's time to fix it into the waistline of your blouse so these are all of my pieces here i have my back the two of them left and right i have my front which is just one main piece across the front of the blouse i have my sleeve two in total i also have my cascading flounce in the main fabric because of the thickness of the brocade, I decided instead of cutting two pieces in the main material, I decided to cut the second one that would sit underneath this main material in a thinner black lining that I thought would work really well with the design. And because it's thin, I think when it's sort of stitched along to the main one and pleated back into the waistline, it would not be too bulky to sew in. So I also cut my underskirt, which has the dimension already sorted out in the pattern video and it's essentially just twice your waist measurement for and a length that sort of is a little bit longer than the cascade in the bottom so this is my front piece and the first thing we need to do is to mark our dart so i've just grabbed my front pattern and with a pin i'm going to be transferring my dart points for the left and for the right hand side i find this to be the like the most straightforward way to transfer darts without thinking too much so once those pins are in place i just take a chalk and i mark exactly when the pin passes through the fabric so i know that's where my dart is supposed to end so what i have to do then is just find my notched points for the dart and then align it to the chalk mark that we just made with the pin and with the pattern so i'm going to do this for the left and for the right hand dart for the front and then i'm going to repeat the same for the back as well so because the back is like mirrored on the two sides and you only have one pattern you, you end up cutting two pieces and you need to mark two dots that go on the back of the blouse so once the dart is marked it means you are ready to sew so the back is already done and sorted i've pinned it in place and i'm going to take these to my machine i'm going to be sewing using a normal straight stitch remembering to do a reverse stitch at the beginning and at the end if you find doing a back stitch at the end too difficult you can just take the the needle out and run out some thread and tie two knots to secure your darts at the end so these are all of my pieces done for the top half of the garment i have my backs and my front and i'm just pinning together the shoulder and the side seam before taking them to my machine to sew down now that they're both pinned in place i'm going to be sewing the shoulders and the side seam of the blouse on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch on my domestic machine as for the tension and the stitch size i just worked with average so everything is relatively the same compared to other fabrics i've worked with so i also went ahead to overlock my shoulders and side seams because this fabric frays a lot and i just wanted to avoid that next up here i'm just overlocking the neckline because once that is done all i have to do 
towards the end of this project is to just fold the neckline in once inwards and then stitch that across so now that we have this part of the garment done we can go ahead to work on the sleeves so I have my first sleeve here and the first thing I did is to cut an elastic band that is about the size of your wrist, about the diameter of your wrist plus a little bit more for seam allowance. I'm just going in here to mark 10 centimeters or 4 inches from the sleeve hem from one edge all the way to the other because what we want to do is we want to be able to stitch the elastic along the same distance from point A to point B. So once I've marked this point, this 10 centimeter or 4 inches point, I'm just connecting them together so I can have a curved line that would guide my stitch. So I'm just doing this using my chalk from one end to the other and I'm going to take my elastic and pin it down on one end. All of this I'm doing on the wrong side of the fabric so I don't end up having chalk showing on the right side of the sleeve. So I've pinned that edge of the elastic in place and I'm going to take this to my machine and stitch it down in such a way that I have gathers. So what I did here was as I was pulling the elastic, I was gathering that part of the sleeve underneath the elastic. So what you do is you gather that part or that sort of edge of the sleeve into the elastic that you have so that part fits but then you have the hem side that flares out to create that really nice detail that is around the bottom of the sleeve so you pull the elastic and you gather the sleeve under the elastic until you get to the end so next up I put together the sides of the sleeve and I'm stitching them together like so from the underarm all the way to the sleeve hem and then I went back in to overlock that seam so it looks nice and neat since this fabric is very see-through so you want it to look even neat when you look into the sleeve from the outside. So I did that for the two sleeves and I'm going to be fitting the sleeve into the armhole of the blouse. So I'm just tucking this, this particular sleeve into the armhole. I'm matching the side seams on the bottom like so. I'm going to match the sleeve head points together and then I'm just going to pin the other parts of the sleeve in place. If you find that your sleeve is a little bit big, you either have the option of easing that sort of excess into the top of the arm, arm hole or arm curve or you can just make tiny gathers that you can arrange into place on top of the armhole of the blouse. So I'm just going in here to sew my sleeve on a 1cm seam allowance using a normal straight stitch on my domestic machine from the beginning all the way to the end, not forgetting to do my back stitch. After that, I'm going to go in with my overlocker to just, you know, knitting everything so it looks really nice and clean. Because of the transparency of the fabric, you want to ensure that when you wear this and you look inside, it looks tidy just as well. So I did this for the left and for the right sleeve of the blouse. So far, so good. I'm really pleased with the blouse so far. I think I'm really happy with the choice of sleeve. Instead of going for a traditional balance sleeve, I decided to, you know, do that elastic detail around the hem and have that flaring out detail at the bottom. So the next thing we need to do after this is to consider the cascading flounce. So I took the liberty to pin together the lining to the main material. So I put together the right side. So the right side of the lining to the right side of the main fabric and I pinned along the edge I pinned along the bottom so when I take this in my machine to sew I know I just need to sew along the edge that has the pins in place so I'm going to be sewing from that beginning point which is where the center back is sewing along the bottom from that point A all the way to the end which is the side that is on the front of the blouse so once that is done, I'm going to be taking this in my machine and I'm going to be sewing on a 1cm seam allowance or whatever seam allowance you decide to work with that you incorporated in your pattern. And when you get to this edge, you just lift up your foot, leave your needle in place, 
drop your footer back and continue sewing along the bottom because this particular seam is really long you can just take your time doing this listen to music have coffee have juice just enjoy making this blouse because it was the most satisfying thing to make for the holiday season so once i get to the edge i'll take out my last pin do my back stitch and then trim my corners because when you trim these particular edges and you turn this inside out, it just allows this shape to have a nicer point along that particular edge. So I did that like so and I'm going to turn it inside out and give this a press to relax all of my seams uh, along the edges, along the bottom and just to make it nice and tidy ready to be fixed into the waistline of the blouse. After pressing this particular piece, this is what it looks like. It's looking really good and tidy already. I pressed the side with the main fabric and the lining side as well, just to have everything straight and neat. And I'm just folding it away so I can get my main blouse to fit it in place. So I'm just going to open up the blouse like so, so I can have the waistline on show like this. And I'm going to be grabbing my cascading flounce or piece and I'm going to be grabbing the side that starts from the back so I'm aligning the center back line of the flounce to the center back of the blouse along this edge and I'm going to be pinning it all the way to the second dart on the front because if you remember if you've seen the pattern tutorial you know I wanted the folding to sort of align with the second dart or sort of three quarter way through the front of the blouse so I've just pinned that in place and I'm adding a few pins along the side seam and along the other dart and I'm going to start folding so if you've notched the point where the fold line is on your fabric this should be a whole lot easier because you just have to look for the notched points and just pin them in place so the notch point for the front and the notch point for the side you pin those in place you fold it again and then you find the notch for this particular layer you pin that to the layer before this and i think the only thing i was worried about was the thickness of this particular seam because i ended up folding like three or four times and i ended up having so many layers i was worried my machine would not be able to sew it but it actually did so i was very very grateful for that so i'm just going ahead to pin this particular point here fold again find the notched point align it with this particular point or place and then fold the last one which is a narrower sort of fold or pleat compared to the other ones and i'm just going to pin everything all together because what i want to do first is to sew this particular folded part first before going ahead to add the under skirt so i'm going to take this in my machine and i'm going to sew from the back all the way to the front along the waistline on a one centimeter seam allowance so i can catch all of those pleats or layers in one go sewing very slowly because i didn't want to break my machine or break my needle i'm going ahead to sew in the cascading flounce layers into the waistline of the blouse on the wrong side of the fabric and i'm just sewing in on this particular point to the side all the way to my center back line so this is what it looks like at this particular point it looks really really good i'm happy with the way this came out and after this i'm going to be working on the gathered on that skirt which i cut in this on Garanza fabric so the entire length of this thing is twice of my waist measurement so by the time it's gathered back into my waistline it would you know have a little bit of volume underneath the cascading flounce so i'm just going to take this to my machine and i'll be sewing on one edge with the loosest or longest stitch i have because when that is done and i pull the bobbing thread it automatically we gather this entire piece the way i want it to be so i'm just going to take my blouse so far the top and the bottom piece i'm going to be turning it backwards like so so i can see the waistline seam and i'm going to be taking my organza on that skirt and i'm going to be pulling the bobbing thread to make gathers so because this particular fabric is quite fragile and tender i just was very gentle when i was doing this because if you pull too hard you might end up pulling 
the entire thread out of the seam and you have to start all over again so i'll just pull gently move the gathers across and do it from the other side as well until i have everything gathered as much as i want it to be so i'm going to pin one side along this edge and i'm going to pin the other side along the other edge and then just sort of spread out the gathers until it's even across the waistline seam so i'm going to move it across like so add a few pins across and when everything is pinned down in place i'm good to stitch that into the waistline seam of the blouse i'm going to take this in my machine and sew on about 1.5 centimeter seam allowance or half an inch and i'm going to be sewing very very slowly because at this point i already had a few layers along this particular waistline seam but the aim is i wanted this particular flounce to have an underskirt that would cover up my hip a little bit if i wanted to wear this top with leggings or with trousers so after doing that i'm going to take it uh, to my overlocker and overlock that seam and because it was bulky my overlocker was literally begging for freedom but i wanted that seam to be nice and tidy and that worked so next up i'm overlocking my center back edge for the left and for the right hand side so when i fix my zip in place that's side of the back of the garment is nice and clean so once that is done i'm going to take the edge that doesn't have the cascading flounce and i'm going to be top stitching the seam in such a way that you don't see the seam from the outside of the garment and i'm top stitching it to the point where the cascading flounce ends or starts depending on how you look at it so this is what the blouse looks like so far it's looking really really good already the bottom i overlocked the side with the cascading flounce together with the underskirt because i just thought it was the easiest way to put that entire back of the blouse together so once that is all done i'm going to be aligning the two center backs like this matching the waistlines together and i'm going to be marking where i want my zip to be so i'm just putting a pin here and i'm going to put another one at the hem of this center back i'm going to grab my zip and i'm going to be marking where i want my zip to end and i like to put my zip a little bit below my waistline so when it's time to wear the garment it's easy to get into so i'm going to be sewing from that point that i marked all the way to the hem and go ahead to fix my zip on the top half of the blouse so i'm just sewing that sort of bottom area of the center back seam where like the organza meets the cascading flounce and i'm going to be going ahead to pin my zip into the center back edges so the way i like to do my zip which is really straightforward and really easy to do is i open up the zip and i pin one side of the zip tape to one side of the center back edge and pin the other side to the other side of the center back edge so what you end up having is by the time you stitch down the two sides of the zip tape to the two sides of the center back your zip is fixed in place I'm going to take this in my machine and sew the zip into the center back of the dress on a one centimeter seam allowance using my zip footer because I find when I use this zip footer it allows me to sew the seam easier in place because it's narrower than the normal footer that the machine came with so I'm sewing this particular side of the zip tape into this side of the back of the blouse and then I'm going to turn it to the other side doing a back stitch at the beginning and taking my pins out as I go along so the zip does not move in the direction I don't want it to so I'm going to sew this up until the top when I get to the end and do my back stitch to secure that in place so the last thing you need to do is you need to fold the neckline inwards by about one centimeter or one and a half centimeters and sew that to finish up the neckline of the blouse you have the option of either cutting a facing and sewing into the neckline or using bass tape but i think this method worked just as well it's just that 
you have to sew it in such a way that it looks good from the outside because that's going to be very obvious on the neckline of the blouse along the back and along the front so just sew this ever so slowly fold along the way if you want to use pins you can go ahead and use pins just to make sure it comes out looking nice and neat so this is the finished blouse i went ahead to press all of my seams my side seams my shoulder seams my neckline as well and i really really love the outcome i think it's a very unique design and the fabric really made everything look unique in a way i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video if you did please give this video a thumbs up comment all of your thoughts and suggestions down below what plans do you guys have for the new year if you have any project ideas share them as well and i will try my best to come through for you guys until my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye